This is Nigar Yagoblu. She is getting married to Seymour Hazi. This was an unusual wedding because Seymour, who is considered a prisoner of conscience, is in jail and their registration ceremony took place in prison. The video Nigar, who herself has experienced the fate of being a political prisoner and is a daughter of a former political prisoner, says on the first attempt there was a problem with the marriage registration and she suspects that it was an order from local authorities to prevent the wedding. Seymour Hazi is an Azerbaijani journalist for the independent newspaper and a TV host of Azerbaijani Hour, online television broadcasting from France due to the strict media environment in Azerbaijan. Seymour is currently serving a five-year prison sentence on hooliganism charges. However, his media colleagues believe that the verdict is not fair and he is in fact being punished for his journalistic activities. Seymur Azi həm də bir siyasi partiya funksiyonerdir. Yəni, irəli getmiş qərb mediasında siz belə şeyə rast gələ bilməzsiniz. Məsələn, Guardian qəzisini götürün. Orada hansısa partiyanın funksiyonerinin müxbirlik etdiyini, yazarlıq etdiyini görmüşsünüz. Ola bilər, kənar yazar olaraq bir yazısını orada dərc etdirsin. Bu, normal. Amma sabah o adamın başına bir iş gələndə Guardian qəzisi durub demir ki, jurnalistə basqı oldu və s. Niyə? Çünki o siyasətçidir, siyasət adamdır sadəcə. Bizdə məsələ ondandır ki, insanlarımız siyasətlə jurnalistikanı qarışdırırlar. Seymour's case is one of many examples of the consequences of critical dissent in the country. Azerbaijan is a post-Soviet country with a population of about 10 million, rich in oil and gas. It portrays itself to the world as a diverse, tolerant, progressive and multicultural country. Azerbaijan is unique as it is the first Muslim nation to adopt a secular democracy in 1908 and in 1919 it then gave women the right to vote as an act of coexistence and acceptance for all cultural parts of the society. Neil Watson is a press officer for the European Azerbaijan Society, which was established to promote business, culture and the political stance of Azerbaijan around Europe. Well, Azerbaijan is uh, renowned for uh, being a very internationally, very multicultural place. In fact, there is even a multicultural institute now, uh, which has been founded underneath the presidential administration. Um, and in fact, that always was the case because um, Baku itself is on the Caspian Sea, and even since the 19th century, there's been a lot of oil extraction. It's always been one of the most multicultural places, both in the Russian Empire and also in the Soviet Union. According to Neil, Azerbaijan is particularly proud of itself being tolerant in terms of accepting people from different religions close to Azerbaijan and is actively participating in cultural projects overseas. Azerbaijan is ostensibly a Muslim majority country. It's only the, the only place in the world where you have Sunni and Shia clerics working alongside each other. Um, and also it has a Jewish community, it's the only place outside of, uh, of Israel with the state-built synagogues. In Guba we have an entirely uh, Jewish town, the Red City. Leila Aliyeva, Azerbaijani political analyst, takes a different perspective. Cultural diversity, it's also about how you treat your own cultural heritage. And here we see a great discrepancy between how our government treats their own historical uh, heritage and the external um, issues. You have our government, uh, first of all president and his uh, uh, wife, first lady, 
uh, Mihri Banarib, uh, giving enormous money to the preservation and restoration of the uh, foreign uh, objects. According to Leila, tolerance is not only limited to culture. All fundamental values need to be respected and protected in a truly diverse country, including individual liberties. One of the major indications of tolerance is a tolerance to the different opinion. And that's what is not present in the country. Uh, we still have uh, many activists being abroad, emigrated, and the others uh, being under the travel ban. Political intolerance, media diversity in Azerbaijan is also problematic. According to the BBC Azerbaijan country profile, Azerbaijan's impressive economic performance over the past two decades has not been matched by the development of free media. State outlets and many private ones promote the ruling president Aliyev family. Khadija Ismailova, an investigative journalist who is considered toxic for the Azerbaijani government, says it's hard to talk about diversity and media pluralism. That word does not exist in Azerbaijan. Diversity and pluralism in Azerbaijan? Are you kidding me? <laughs> there is no single TV channel that tells the truth in this country. Uh, the old TV channels are uh, under government's control. There is uh, semi-official censorship uh, in place. Media freedom has been under attack for many years in Azerbaijan. The state completely controls the broadcast media, the television stations, the radio stations. Um, in 2009, the government kicked foreign broadcasters off national frequencies, which effectively um, eliminated uh, stations like BBC, Voice of America and Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, which were really valuable independent news sources in Azerbaijan. Um, now independent news can only really be found online. Um, there is one main opposition newspaper left, Azad Look, but it's been under attack for many, many years. And uh, that newspaper is um is not available in most of the regions of Azerbaijan. Circulation of newspapers is alarmingly low. Many carries very little advertising. Government control of the advertising market and distribution networks has deprived the independent media the income it needs to keep operating. The director of Azerbaijan's Media Rights Institute Rashid Hajili says Azerbaijani media community is still struggling to achieve international standards in terms of freedom of expression, information access and media professionalism in spite of 25 years of independence from Soviet control. Azerbaijan's media footprint is pluralistic only in name mainly due to the government's widespread interference, which has left little room for diversity. Media censorship is officially scrapped, however the authorities always find effective means to silence journalists. The government uses defamation charges as a legal means to punish journalists and stifle independent and opposition media. Other tactics include using allegations of hooliganism, drug and weapons possession, treason and tax evasion to control the media. Internet content is more diverse, but uh, it's uh, but people are uh, being punished even for uh, exercising their freedom of expression via internet. So uh, a lot of people, a lot of people get uh, harassed just for liking content, not even posting it, but just for liking content in Facebook. But uh, thanks to the uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter, and other social media, uh, some content reaches the citizens. So uh, we, cannot, uh, we cannot speak about the traditional ways of distributing uh, information uh, in a diverse way in Azerbaijan. International Media Watchdog Reporters Without Borders ranks Azerbaijan 163 out of 180 countries in its 2016 World Press Freedom Index. It states, not content with crashing all forms of pluralism, President Aliyev has been waging a war against his remaining critics since 2014.
according to Hikmet Hajiyev, spokesperson of Azerbaijan's foreign ministry. Freedom of media, as such pluralism of press, is fully guaranteed in Azerbaijan. More than 5,000 media outlets are operating in the country and 10,000 people are engaged in media industry. In itself, these facts prove diversity and pluralism in media space. Censorship has been abandoned since 1997 and no journalist was charged for defamation. More than 76% of Azerbaijani population has an access to fully unrestricted internet. Ownership and control of the media plays a crucial and deliberate role in shaping the views of society by misinforming its readers, listeners and viewers of current domestic events and developing trends. For example, in 2012, a public uprising by thousands in the city of Guba seriously disrupted Azerbaijan's usual calm political environment. Protesters accused the mayor for making offensive remarks and demanded his resignation. Many were injured and arrested. Given the protest was anti-government, local broadcasters chose to whitewash the riot by focusing on the problems in the West and the United States instead, completely avoiding the protest on its own doorstep. Those aware of the event had to follow developments from foreign news channels or wider social media. Maidan TV is the most popular online TV channel. Broadcast from Germany has built up a reputation for its transparent investigative and diverse reporting. As a result, its journalists contributing to Maidan are facing undue pressure from the authorities. Two leading media watchdogs stopped operations in 2014 after their offices were closed by the police. It followed weeks of harassment, including the freezing of organizations' bank accounts and allegations of unpaid taxes and fines. Azer Hestret does not agree that all is black and white. He thinks there has been some improvement in terms of professionalism of journalists, for example, naming sources, checking quotes and references. Also, government officials are now more open to the media, particularly President's press office regularly circulates information about President's activity. President'in öz saytında, yani president.a saytında bile siz gündelik haberleri görebilirsiniz. Öz de kifayet kadar operatif şekilde. Eyni zamanda Azertaj'da president'in faaliyetiyle bağlı, devlet kurumlarının faaliyetiyle bağlı haberler operatif şekilde verilir. Üçüncü bir taraftan ise müxalif mi olsun, yaxud da iktidar mı olsun, fark etmez. İstənilən media qurumu birbaşa devlet qurumuna müraciət ederek informasiya almaqda 90-cı illerdeki kimi çetinlik çekmir. Ve çok sevindirici aldı ki, bir çox devlet qurumları bunu uğurlu bir şekilde edirlər. Azerbaycan has recently started to host many international events. Opinion is divided. For some, it's good as it puts Azerbaycan on the map and attracts new investors and tourists. For others, it seems the government is building its propaganda around the events. Image is incredibly important to the Azerbaijani regime. That is the whole point behind hosting uh, mega events and spending millions on lobbying efforts abroad. Um, mega events like the European Games, like the Formula One European Grand Prix, draw a lot of publicity to the country. Some of it is perhaps positive, um, but what the Azerbaijani government hasn't realized is when you invite international scrutiny, um, you get both the good and the bad. So while it wants the world to look at Azerbaijan and view it as this modern, glamorous place, um, the government also really reacts strongly towards any perceived criticism, which is anything reporting on um, you know, the real situation taking place uh, behind these events. Khadija paid a heavy price in the run-up to the games for uncovering the thing that government probably wished to hide. I missed the uh, European Games because I was in prison back then, but a lot of journalists who came to, to the country uh, from uh, other countries from abroad, they reported about uh, my arrest and other harassment uh, cases. Uh, so um, uh, I don't think 
it's possible for Azerbaijani government to uh, save its image while it uh, continues harassment of journalists and media institutions. What the Azerbaijani government doesn't seem to realize is that the best PR really would be implementing positive reforms. They can't buy the sort of coverage that they're after. But if they released political prisoners, if they overturned regressive legislation, if they opened space for civil society to function again fully and freely, that in itself would generate this positive coverage that they so desperately crave. Um, I think there is uh, an issue in uh, Azerbaijan is very much a post-Soviet country. It's a very new country, it's an emerging democracy. Um, so it's doing what it can at the moment. Azerbaijan, together with all its positive attributes, can be a good model and a truly diverse and tolerant country if it takes steps to improve its internal political situation. This would include ensuring a lively balance and a broader diversity of voices are being heard within its media. Come on,